<clears throat> House of Champs here, here with Edception for our first Skype interview deck profile that we're going to be hosting. And uh, let's get through some of the cards. You want to say hi, Ed? All right, so he piloted this. Uh, it was 460 duelists that you defeated, correct? Yes. Well, to get eighth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, one copy of Electromagnetic Turtle to start things out. Two Atondels. Two Deviatis. Three copies of Decatron. Three Hammerdick. Three Petrula. Three Saint Samos. One Anonchu. One uh, Pure My. I actually haven't said this out loud in a while. Pure Myus. Three Raidens, two copies of Charge, with the Rota below, uh, so three search cards. One Monster Gate, one One for One, three Reasonings, two Scapegoat, teching out even more. Deciding to play 37 with the three Upstarts, and a Solemn Warning. Uh, so, let's talk about the main deck before we get into the other parts. What made you decide to play Electromagnetic Freaking Turtle? I'm surprised they're calling four with Cosmo still out. I guess uh, after they know what you're playing. Uh, no, well, blind, blind, I feel like it's better to call four because, um, like, not knowing what your opponent's playing. Because both Infernoid and Cosmo both play uh, level fours, and Infernoid's getting really popular all of a sudden. And if you call eight against Infernoid, it's always going to guarantee. So if you don't know what your opponent's playing, four seems like the right choice because both decks play level fours. Okay. Uh, let's get into the side a bit. Uh, one copy, or two copies of Cyber Dragon Core and one Cyber Dragon along with them instead of the third one. Uh, a Lila, three Mistaken Arrest, three Mystical Space Typhoons, two Chimera Techs, one Breakthrough, and two Typhoons. Uh, so let's get into your reasoning. You like uh, Typhoon slash MST over, say, Fairy Winds for the pe uh, Pendulum decks? Yeah, yeah because, because um, most, most of the time. time I don't, I don't actually, actually use my, uh, my, like, spell and trap destruction for their scales. I usually use it for, um, for the floodgates they have, like, emptiness or stuff like that. But it's also, it's, like, added versatility. And my problem with Fairy Wind, it, it gets damaged junglers. And Typhoon doesn't. And they, sometimes it's, like, impossible to play around Typhoon. So it's, like, really, like, crazy good. That's a very good point. Uh, I hadn't actually thought about Fairy when getting stuffed by Damage Juggler re in recent times. Uh, let's get into the extra deck. Two copies of Norden, one Black Rose Dragon, one Colossal Fighter, two copies of Omega, the Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, a uh, Scrap Archfiend, which is your only... I, I wanted to ask you about this, I'll ask after we finish, but it's your only vanilla in the extra. Uh, start a Spark Dragon... Uh, Trishula, uh, and then we get to the X Seeds. We have Abyss Dweller, Castell, Minerva, Draco Sack, and uh, I'll say the Sylvan High Protector. So let's talk about a few of these choices. Why, uh, why I'll say over Felgrand or another eight? Uh, because I'll say it comes up because, um, like, it's really good games two and three against Cosmo. Because when I side in the Chimera Tech, they're level 8, so if I summon an Atendel, I can like get rid of their entire field. Like I contact fuse with a big ship, which gets rid of the big ship, summon an Atendel, and I put Cosmo Town to the bottom of the deck. And also it's pretty good because it's like, it's uh, another way to mill, even if it's one, but you always call it reasoning. So if you get reasoning with its effect, you know, you just add it to your hand. If you don't, you get rid of a problem card. And I never really needed, I, I never felt like I needed Felgrand because the monsters in themselves, like Deviati and Anonku, they're traps. Like, they're trap monsters by themselves, so I'd rather have a way to deal with monsters or problem cards, and that's what I'll say did. Alright, Draco Sack over Big Eye. Um, Draco Sack is really good because what it does the same thing as Big Eye, where it clears problem cards. It also clears uh, spells and traps, so that's why it's really good. But the biggest reason is, if you go Draco Sack, 
and summon any of the big guys like Anoku or Debiati, you, you have two free to gaze with tokens. So, and Big Eye doesn't do that. Yeah. I also kind of like the, uh, it's another machine also, but I'm, I'm sure that almost never comes up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Minerva playing with, uh, money in the extra. Yeah, the, the game's, game's paid to win. win. I, I literally, I won, I won something in the act. It was a bad act. Yeah. Like, you a lot. The milling, I, I can't even imagine how much extra health the six cards can do. Oh, no. Um, on the bubble for top eight. I won because I suicided my Minerva into his Castell, and I actually milled the Life Sword with a second effect to destroy a scale, when I had no way of clearing the scales. And, uh, let's see, um, I think that's all my questions on the extra. In the side, you're still playing three copies of Mistake and Arrest. What's your reasoning on this? Um, because if you, every deck's gonna make you go first, because you're playing Inferno, it's like a combo deck. Um, they make you go first, and they're playing Pepe. If you set Mistake and Arrest, they have to kill you with the six cards they draw. And if they're playing a Pendulum deck, that means two of their cards have to be scales, and four of their cards have to be monsters. And that rarely happens, so you're probably not dying that turn. So it's basically like a, like a, basically, anti going first, like me going first. So I activate it, they can't kill me. And as long as Infernoid lives the very first push, then you end up winning. And I think it's better than Mistake, because it doesn't get blown out by, um, like Castell, Diamond Dire Wolf, or like um, MSP in general, because uh, whenever I set backfield, they always feel inclined to Diamond Dire first because they think it's an MSP or something like that. So you punish them with uh, Mistake and Arrest. So we get into um, one one random breakthrough skill. Both you and Tamez did this. Is this more so because it's millable? Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good in a mirror because uh, a lot of times it comes down to, uh, like, Anoku or Deviati's effect resolving, and you can just break this skill. But and you can abuse it with Omega. That's like the number one thing. But I guess it was like my, my one concession to like Dark Law, Diamond, and stuff like that. Like I signed it in all the time, and it, maybe it should have been made because it answered like all those cards. But uh, it probably could have been or should have been a Regeki because like my only loss in Swiss was to Dark Law, and it was to Dark Law Durand. If I had Regeki, like the game would have been over. But, yeah. So, this has been Edisceptions. Um, I don't know how many top eights in, like, the past few months for regionals, but just an insane amount. Yeah. And uh, just getting in there again. And all your regionals, they're 400-plus people. I think the other ones were, like, 900? Yeah, I got the, the last LA regional. That was a little over 1,000, like, 14, 1,020-something around there. Yeah, it was insanity. And, uh... Oh yeah, my last question. I almost forgot. Uh, you're only playing one vanilla. I see a lot of people make room for the gym night or make room for the uh, the uh, six also. What was your uh, reasoning? Besides, did you just not find room since you had the Minerva? Uh, well, one, the Minerva took up space, and playing two Omega took up space. But I love double Omega. If you ever open up double Omega, you win. But I I only played one. Uh, one scrap watching instead of all the others because. I never needed them, and half the time these, like, vanilla suck, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't do anything, they should have clear up space, but, um, I want my monsters to probably just do something, so, like, Monsters, yeah, I definitely like that reasoning. I just wanted to, for, you know, somebody else to be able to explain that. So, uh, thanks for joining us, uh, and please be sure to subscribe. Follow the new Twitch in the description. This was streamed live on Zodiac Duelist TV. And uh, you're missing out. We just had his odds feature match also on here with Ed commentating with me. Uh, thanks for watching. All right, so we're still here for Twitch. That was just for you.